preliminary observations to the Yasts and Sirozas. The word Yast in Zen, Yaste, means properly the act of worshipping, the performance of the Yasna. And it is often used in Parsi tradition as synonymous with Yasna, but it has also been particularly applied to a certain number of writings in which the several Izeds are praised and magnified. These writings are generally of a higher poetical and epical character than the rest of the Avesta, and are most valuable records of the old mythology and historical legends of Iran. You know, people want to incorporate the other stuff from the area somehow. And a lot of that ends up not just being interpreting through the faith, um, but to, per se, have a different faith. Um, you know, because they're worshipping new things or different things, or there's a different paradigm of that sort of thing. Because if all the hymns, all the praise, all the separation is to be for God, well, what's the diverting through other stuff? Um, the Parsis believe that formerly every Amshaspand and every Ized had its particular yast, but we now possess only 20 yasts and fragments of another. The writings known as yast fragments, the Afrin Zartust and Vistasp yast, printed as yasts 21, 22, 23, 24, and Western Guards edition are not proper yasts and have no liturgical character. They are not devoted to the praise of any Ized. An order in which the yasts have been arranged by the Parsis follows exactly the order of the Siroza, which is the proper introduction to the yasts. And we have a more succinct list of that sort of thing than, you know, like in India. But you know, the list of 33 and that sort of thing, it, it, it goes way beyond that. There'd be a different hymn for um, uh, Siroza. Siroza means 30 days. It is the name of a prayer composed of 30 invocations addressed to the several Ezeds who preside over the 30 days of the month. There are two Sirozas, but the only difference between them is that the formulas in the former are shorter, and there is also occasionally some difference in the epithets, which are fuller in the latter. In India, the Siroza is recited in honor of the dead on the 30th day after the death, on the 30th day of the 6th month, on the 30th day of the 12th month, and then every year on the 30th day from the anniversary day. And Quatil's Zendavesta 2, 315 says that. But one of the things that I was trying to uh, articulate earlier was that there's different scriptures. Um, it's like they talk about 108 I mean, in India, they talk about 108 Upanishads, 4 Vedas, 16 Puranas, and many, many Smirti and Shruti outside of that. Um, but even when you look at those numbers, those are a specific list, and the, which ones are included in that varies. And very often, these are associated with certain entities, so... Um, some of what was never was more than a short hymn or a short chant. Um, some of it is longer, obviously. Um, the correspondence between the formulas of the Siroza and the Yasts is as follows. Ormazd, Ormazd Yast, 1, 1 to 23. Bahman, Bahman Yasts, 1, 24 to 33. Arda Behest, Arda Behest Yast, three. 
Shah, Ravar, Sa, Pen, Darmad. There isn't one remaining. Um, Kordad, the Kordad Yast, so number four. Murdad, the Epa Adar, and Adar, no longer represented. Aban, Aban Yast, which is five. Korshed, Korshed Yast, which is six. Ma, the Ma Yast, which is seven. Tir, Tir Yast, which is eight. Gos, the Gos Yast, which is nine. The Epa Meher, which is no longer represented. Meher, the Meher Yast, which is ten. Srosh, Srosh Yast, which is eleven. Russian, Russian Yast, which is twelve. Farvardin, Farvardin Yast, which is thirteen. Bahram, the Bahram Yast, which is fourteen. Ram, the Ram Yast, which is fifteen. Bad and Da'epadin, no longer represented. Din, the Din Yast. 16, Ard, Asha Yast, which is 17, Astad, the Astad Yast, which is 18, Asman is no longer represented, Zemyad, the Zemyad Yast, which is 19, Mahraspand, and Anevran are no longer represented here in the Yasts. That have been lost are, therefore, those of the Kshatra area, Spenta Armaete, Amerotat, Atar, Vata, Asman, Mathra, Spenta, and Anagra, Ra, A, Ka, U. The second Yast are Yast of the Seven Amashaspans appears, you know, the Archangels, appears to have been no independent Yast. It was common to all the seven yasts devoted to the several Amesha spans, and accordingly it is recited on the first seven days of the month. One might suppose that it was originally a part of the Ormazd yast, as the Amesha spentas are invoked in company with the Hura Mazda, see Rosa 1, 8, 15, and 23. There may indeed have been several yasts for one, and the same formula of the Sirosa. As in all of these formulas, more than one Z are invoked. This would apply not only to the Yast of the seven Amashaspans, but also to the Vanant Yast, 20, which in that case ought to follow the Tir Yast. So, see Sarosa, 13. Now, I had experience with the, uh, with, oh, I don't remember which Enochian key, but I was told. Um, like a key or a call or whatever for each of the divine names. Now, one of the things that you find in a lot of traditions is the personification and separation of divinity. So, Tawheed is the making oneness, so uh, the, to throw an Arabic term, um, to returning to monotheism without losing any of the principles, basically. Um, just the personifications and the limits and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, not every Yast, however, is devoted to the Ized whose name it bears. Thus, the Ardabahest Yast is mostly devoted to Aeryaman. The Ram Yast and the Zemyad Yast are devoted to Vagyu and to the Havareno, but Aeriman, Vagyu, and the Havareno are invoked in the same C. Rosa formulas as Ardabehest, Ram, and Zamyad. Anayast is named from the opening name in the corresponding C. Rosa formula. The systematic order, so apparent in the C. Rosa, pervades the rest of the liturgy to a great extent. The enumeration of the Ezeds in Yasna 17, uh, 12 through 4a, so 16, 3 through 6, 
follows exactly the order of the Sirosa exap, except that it gives only the first name of each formula and the question may be raised whether this passage in the Yasna is taken from the Sirosa or whether the Sirosa is developed from the Yasna. The very idea of the Sirosa is that to say that the attribution of each of the 30 days of the month of certain entities seem to have been borrowed from the Semites, the tablets found at the library of Asur Banapal contain an Assyrian Sirosa, that is, a complete list of the Syrian entities considered to be gods that preside over the 30 days of the month. So, um, in the Semitic tradition, what we have is a lot of the, um, what's the thing? Um, you know, they add the Yud, He, or the Aleph, Lemed, or the Aleph, Lamb, I guess it would have been called, older um, Lemed was a Hebrew name, but in Aramea, in the period when they wrote the Bible. Um, yeah. So, those things will be added at the end. So, Emmanuel and all this other stuff, we know that these aren't gods. These are, um, you know, belonging to God. This is, we have, we know God in this quality through such and such. That's what's being said. Um, but there's been a lot of confusion, and part of that confusion resulted in Christianity. Um, other of this resulted in angel worship. Some ambiguity in the language, you know, again, you know, like this. Okay, maybe this is a broad term, and we're going to narrow this down. It's only about this bull, and it's only about this, and um, then, you know, we think of these... Now, we honor, we mention the forces of nature. That's, you know, you don't have to take things as God to involve yourself in that, to uh, evoke a connection to these things. Um, but the invocation, the invocation... Now, uh, a lot of these things could be just... I'm, I'm not saying that there necessarily was an original of a lot of this stuff with Zarathustra or any... Or any prophet, because, um, but some of it, as I said, it can be a representation of the interaction. Um, some of it, uh, you know, between God and other entities, and they're telling the tale, and you're repeating the tale, and you're r ritually taking part in it. Um, 